Welcome everybody to the playthrough of Ruins Deathbinder. You're here at so many games, so little time. And uh, I just received this game in the mail from Kickstarter. You can see the unboxing on the channel. You can see the how to play on the channel. So now the logical next step is the playthrough. Now, we are not doing the campaign. We are just doing a regular descent, okay? So basically that means um, we're just going to try to get to four levels and survive. And basically that's how it is. So um, with the, the reason why I'm not doing the campaign is because it's very spoilerific and it's not that long. So I suggest suggest people do it. I mean, maybe I'll do some do one down the line, and you can check it out anyway. If you're not bothered to do it yourself or just interested, then I can do it regardless. But uh, for this one, I'm just going to do the uh, descent. Okay. All right. So first things first. This is us. All right. First thing that I have to do is choose a track down. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, show that. These are my starting uh, traits, and also it says what I am. So I'm level one. My spell levels are level one. Uh, my melee, melee is level one. Maximum attacks is three. Uh, store, it means I can store one card. My maximum health is six, as you can see here. My starting defense is one. And then the blight is zero, and my experience is zero. Okay. Vulnerabilities is just one and one, so normal and I have no side quest at the moment. So, first I'm gonna choose a track. Now, the difficulty in choosing a track is whenever you do an adventure token, you look at all the encounters and that is the amount of blight that you increase, okay? So I'm gonna to have to choose a track where I don't gather too much blight because the more blight you get, the more enemies you encounter. Um, which is not necessarily a bad thing because it gives you experience, right? And I just realized I have a sticker on my hand from my daughter. Okay, so get that out of the way. So um, I also want to make sure I get to a rest phase at a certain point. Let's start with something interesting, okay? I'll start in the beginning. I'll go here, which means we'll be getting two events, all right? two events and one encounter, so one battle. So I tend to put it here uh, just for easy overview. So the first event is this one. So the ground, can you see it? The ground shakes as old walls start to cave in. Place impassable caved in tokens on B1 and B2 spaces. If you're standing on the caved in space, move to the nearest available token, add blight for resolved adventures. All right, so the nearest available token. So this is starting off really badly because basically B1 and B2 is caved in. All right. So I need to go to the nearest available token. I guess I can choose. In that case, I'll go here. Now we did resolve one event. Okay, let's put the events here. So I do increase my blight by one. At least I don't get injured, right? So this goes back to the bag for now. All right, so the new one that I picked up is another event and uh, encounter, okay? So, all right, so let's draw another event. Okay, so it basically says, you found an unconscious man on the ground, what do you do? I can rob the man for two experience and two blights, or I can um, help him, and that means I lose two cards of my draw deck, and I lose one blight. Now, in this case, it's still early. I think I'm just gonna rob him. So I get two experience, and I also get two blights, which means next time I'll encounter two enemies, which is immediately. I draw two enemies, and the first one is a Gurlin, okay, let's see. So basically a Gurlin means that he has scatter, 
So that means at the end of the round, uh, it's not that easy to see, right, for you guys. That means at the end of the round, uh, I have to be able to kill him outright or he runs away, okay? If his health is below eight. So I'll put him here, the girl in, okay? And then we also have a raised sword bearer. And the raised sword bearer, basically, you have to defeat him. And after you defeat him, you're going to roll your faith die to see whether or not he comes back alive with two health points. So let's say I kill him, right? He'll come back and then immediately attack me. So there is a chance that I'll get at least one damage. So these are the two I have to attack. And these are my available options. I can do three attacks, right? So we have Sense here. Increase the damage dealt by this card to a single target by the number of blind cards in your hand. I don't have any blind cards. These are here. So there's just one damage. Death Store, you may reduce your health by four points to not deal and receive any more damage this turn. That's when you fight really bad guys. So this is not really worth it. This is a spell, so in, in this turn, increase the tier of the next action card played by one. This is very good. So that would increase the level of the of one other card that I play next. So I'm probably going to use this. Combination, so this is just no special action, but high level, so it could be a good combo with this. Combination in one turn, play cards in below order. So that's a spell, melee, and a spell. And then I can play this as an extra card, which is also powerful. And if this is the first card played this turn, it does not come out, count towards your max attacks limit. So basically, I could play five cards this turn. If I um, start with this, right? So let's let's start with this. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to try and kill the Gurlin because um, it has 10 health. So I'm not sure if it's going to be possible. So let's just count it out. So this, this would be one. Okay. Then I do two. So it's three damage, right? Then it improves the tier. So it's three. So it would be six damage. Ah, uh, no. I can't do the combination because I only have two. So it would be six damage. The highest I can do is seven damage, which means he will run away and I can't kill him. Ah. But I made a mistake. Well, not a mistake. I didn't notice that the Gurlin actually has weaknesses. You see here, he has two and two, which means the values count double. So that becomes very interesting. So let's do the same thing again. If I do the starter, the one damage will become actually two damage, right? Followed by two times two is four. So that would be six damage to the Gurlin, all right? And then another six. So that would be 12 damage to the Gurlin, which would effectively kill it. Okay. And then I'd be using this, this, and this. And then, of course, the Sword Bearer will be able to do one damage to me, but then I have to try to kill him next time. So I'm going to go with this. So once again, I use the starter. So for two damage, because it's times two, one times two is two. All right. So this is, I'll put it here for now whatever then i use improve which is two damage times two is four so this becomes five so six damage and then i use this one because it's doubled by this and that becomes six all right so three times three is six so wait a minute oh i was thinking about something else but i don't think that's possible because with this one it doesn't count to the max attack limit. So I could technically do six damage to him. All right, bear with me here. And then I can play one more card. Actually, three damage to him, not six, because it's not double. So three damage to him. Okay. Then I can play one more card. And if I then play combination, even though I then won't do the special action. Um, no, I don't... Um, I don't have to no i was thinking that i could double it as well but it's always one 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 there would be two damage it would not kill him so never mind i move this here all right so that becomes effectively six damage because three times two is six okay so this one's dead for sure and then i'll use one of my other cards like sense which is useless at this point 
for one damage against the raised sword bearer. So he still has three life. Okay. So once again, I used four because I started with I started with my starter card, which means I can play an extra card. So I ended up with playing four by playing four cards. So from these four, I can then keep one card. Now I like this one the most, the improved card. So these go in my removed action cards deck. And this will be in my uh, stored action cards, which go over here. Okay. Uh, at least like this. This one is dead. But I'll do it now for this. Like this. This one has one damage, but now this one is going to attack me. So he attacks me for one damage. But I have a shield, but my shield is now zero. So right now I'm undefended. Now, it's not over yet. We will attack again. So I go draw back up to six. There we go. And I need to do three damage. And then after my attack, we will see whether or not he, uh, you know, resurrects or not um yeah so let's see the store combination is still the same shatter this is high value but when you use it you have to remove it you cannot store it okay spell weakness is one i really like because you will use this card but then it turns this one into two so every spell will be times two which is really powerful and really nice and then last word if this is your last attack card this turn deal one additional damage Okay, so um, basically I'm just going to use Shatter and get rid of him, so I can only use one card. So three, that will be three damage, four, which means he is dead, but now we roll the Faith die. Okay, so if it's a V sign, if it's this one, that means he comes back to life. If it's an X, it means he does not. So. Ah, oh, he comes back to life. So he still has two life. This card goes away to remove action cards and he hits me for one damage. I'm down to five life. I refresh my action cards and I attack again. So I need to do two damage. Um, so I'm going to have to play two cards uh, regardless. So I'm going to do uh, Death's Door for one damage. And then just a regular blue one for one damage. Um, and then I'm going to store that store. Get rid of this. So two damage, four again. This time he is dead for sure. So remove everything and let's see what we get. So we kill these two. That gives us two experience and three experience. Sorry for the shimmer. It is the light, you know, two and three, so five experience. Uh, and these guys are discarded. Uh, the pile is off screen. Okay, so five experience puts me up to seven. Now I passed six, which means I get to draw a skill card. And that skill card is Prey. Lose two blight when resting, a single use skill. So Prey, you can see it, right? There you go. Lose two blight when resting. That's interesting. So we've done these two. We add two blights. There we go. And then this is done. But then we get to flip it over and it is a side quest. Okay. So the side quest reads, resolve token with rest, reward to experience. Now, of course, you can choose to keep it or not. I'm going to keep it because I've got a rest coming up. And um, also later on, even if I even if I don't like this, I can keep it anyway, and if a new one comes on, I can always comes along. I can always exchange it. Okay, so I think it's always a good idea to keep it regardless, if you have nothing. All right, so let's move on. Here is only my only option. So we have three icons: an event, an encounter, and a rest phase. Okay. So this is three. So this is going to increase by three for sure. So I'm going to have to try to find ways to reduce my blight, for example, my skill card, because otherwise I'm going to start facing three enemies and it's not a good thing. 
Oh, and my defense resets after every fight, so I'm back to one. My health does not. Okay, so first we draw an event. Researcher, toss me a coin, will you? A voice from the darkness asks. Draw Draven, Re Draven Researcher. It's an ambush. Okay, so I'm going to have to find a Draven fight. A Draven Researcher. Now, I'm here he is. Okay. So, just as a reminder, these are special event guys. Okay, you have this side, which is a regular side. And then you have the other side, which only happens when you're in the red for Blights. And they become corrupted and stronger. Okay. So, Draven Researcher is rare finding. Each action card used against the Researcher cannot be stored and needs to be removed. So basically, whatever I use against him, I lose. But it is for experience points, so at least there's that. Now, if you're wondering why haven't I used my experience yet, I can only use it during a rest phase, which is coming up. So, there's that. So, two new cards. Okay, so... Melee weakness, same as spell weakness. This guy has no weaknesses, okay? He just has one one, the usual, and six life. So, um, I think you also, uh, the other ones that we have is focus. If you attack your target with another focus card earlier this turn, deal two additional damage. But we don't have any focus cards, so it's not really important. So, I think now we can use combination. We can do a spell, melee spell, and uh, then use this one as well. Of course, the downside is we lose everything. Um, but okay, it is what it is. I'm going to use the spell weakness. Okay, so the spell weakness will do one damage to him and also increase his spell weakness to two, but it's not does not count for this one. Okay. All right, so then I'm going to use a melee card, the focus one, which is one damage because it's not a spell card. Then with the second one, I'm going to use a regular card, which is two times two is four. So that means this becomes a five and this becomes a one. That means he dies. But, of course, these three cards are all removed, okay? Now, I am losing cards at a high rate, but remember, you can always use experience to get some cards back, okay? Um, so there's always that. So, he's dead. This goes away. This goes away. You get four experience, so I'm up to 11. Put him back on the, on, the, on the stack because there's a chance we might encounter him later on again. And then we fight two level one enemies because the blight is at level two. First one is a fleshling. So nothing special about him except that he has eight life. And you might have seen this. This means you run away, but if you run away, you add two blights. So, you know. So eight life. And no weaknesses. Oh, I forgot to read the flavor text. Let's just do it starting now. Tearing skin, absorbing meat, feeding on fat. Okay, then. Then the other one is the corrupted spider. Okay, so seven health, no real weaknesses, but it has explode. So when the corrupted spider is defeated, deal one damage to all enemies and players. So they ambush their prey from the shadows. So basically, if I kill the corrupted spider one, First, it'll damage the fleshling, but the fleshling does two damage and I have one shield. So if it damages me, then I'm definitely going to lose one health, which of course I don't want to do because healing wounds will mean losing two cards for every point, which is, you know, you want to avoid that. So let's see what the new cards are. Ah, one of my favorite cards is here. Stun. Your target can't attack this turn, but... You can see it has the icon of the faith die, so you have to roll the faith die to see if stun works. But if I were able to stun the fleshling, that would, you know, go a long way. And then two last words. Okay, and increase focus. Spend one defense point to increase the damage of all focus cards placed this turn by one. I have no focus cards, so it's kind of useless. 
All right. So first of all, I'm going to do stun on the fleshling, which would do one damage to it. Let's see. Well, let me think. Because there's no way I can kill both of them this turn. So fleshling, one damage and stun. Hopefully it works. It does not. The stun fails. This is no longer my favorite card. Okay. So I have two more cards I can play. Um, let's see. I could still do combination, which allows me to do extra attacks, but it's all on one, 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 one. So it's kind of annoying. And this can turn into two, at least. Uh, this is going to be a, a tough fight. I hope I don't already die. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to check what happens if you want to run away. So let me skip forward here. All right, so basically, if I want to retreat, I have to give up three cards. Okay, I'm not going to retreat yet, okay? I'll just uh, be bold and try to use combination. So and I'm not going to use combination because there might be more melee cards, which will make this very powerful next round. So I'm going to use increased focus. So that's another damage to the fleshling. And then I'm going to use the last word, which would be two more damage to the fleshling. Because it's last word, one extra damage. So I use these cards. I'm going to keep the stun card, store it, and the other two go away. They attack me for three damage. So one, two, three. So I only have three health left. If they both attack me again, I die. I remember if the corrupted spider dies, it also does one damage extra to me. So I need good cards here. But there is, seem to be one that's kind of okay. All right, so what has happened here? Breaking, that means if I have an attack that does damage to multiple enemies, it will be, this will deal one additional damage to them, but I don't have one. And then finishing move, when this card defeats an enemy, gain health and experience up to max. So I'm gonna try to use this one for sure. So to kill the fleshling, we need eight damage. Okay. So we'll do, if I use this one, this will be one damage, but then this will become two damage. So that will add up to three damage. So you want one more. If I use the finishing move, I actually heal. So, okay. So I use melee weakness, one damage, but that becomes times two. Then I use this one, so one times two is two, so two more damage. So that is now two, four, six, seven. And then I use finishing move, which is one damage, is eight, it's dead. And when this card defeats an enemy, gain health and experience up to your character level. So I gain one health and I gain one experience. So this one's dead. These three, I'm going to keep even though I like finishing move, melee weakness is way more powerful. So I'm going to keep that one. And then the spider attacks me down to three again and another round of fighting. I honestly want to get as much experience as I can. So that's why I'm keeping fighting, even though, of course, my deck is dwindling, as you can see. All right, so we have another stun card combination, but it's impossible. You need three uh, melee cards. Um, I think I'll use combination this time to try and uh, kill it and maybe even uh, stun it. Yeah. All right, so combination is at the end, so I don't have to start with it. So we'll use defense potential. So basically, what is it, does it do? It does one damage, and also according to my character level, it will give me that amount of defense. So one defense. So at least when it attacks, I'll be uh, defended. 
and if I manage to kill it somehow, I will uh, also be defended. So I'm going to try to stun again, so one damage, and then roll the die to see if my stun works. Oh my goodness, no luck at the stun whatsoever. All right, so I need to play another spell card. Mm. I can't do last word, last word, because if I do last word, it won't get me an extra card because this will be the last one. So I'm gonna use breaking. So another damage to the corrupted spider up to three, and then play combination, another one damage. So four damage. And it's down to three health, but it does attack me, so my shield is back to zero. So I keep the stun. It's not even a question, even though I know it's not helping me, but at the moment. All right. So I'm feeling this, this battle is taking way too long. But drawing two enemies, eight and seven health is tough luck. All right. So I need to do three damage. Okay. Um, so we have cleansing. If my vulnerabilities would be up, I can use this to reduce it again. This is double hit. I can attack twice with this card. Whirlwind damages everybody. Um, and then that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, attack with this, just a regular two damage, and then the double hit. So together that will be four damage. One and one is two, plus two is four, and that will be eight damage. So it dies. Um, but it does hit me for one, so I'm down to two health. <laughs> um, and I keep the double hit. All right, so they're both dead. So it's, let's see, three experience plus two experience. So that's five experience. The good news is that I will get another skill card. Let's just hope it's something nice. So five experience plus 12 is 17. So we pass another hand, 14. So I get a skill card break lower an obstacles health points by three that's okay even though we haven't seen any uh obstacle yet we uh we will eventually see some so it can be useful okay we finish now we rest now we can use our hard earned experience so i have 17 experience points i'm gonna increase my health well, should I though? Let's see. If I increase my health, then I have nine points left. If I increase my health and defense, that would be 14. So I have three left. And then I use those last three to buy action cards. And then I get rid of some cards to heal wounds. I think that's what I'm going to do. So maximum health. So I immediately gain two because it's now eight. And then starting defense goes up to three. Okay. And my future plan would be to upgrade melee and spell, both of them. So I'm more powerful, but I don't know. I've been getting hit too too often. So I need to uh, be a little bit more resilient, I feel. So, okay. So those two, it's, uh, how much was it? Eight and six, which is 14. So I'm down to three, and then I spend all three to uh, buy action cards. So I have to shuffle this deck and then um, draw three, store one, and remove the rest. Okay. So I'm shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. So one, two, three. So I have focus, breaking, and last word. In this case, I'm going to use uh, maybe last word. And normally you would, well, okay, no, let's just shuffle again because you're doing it three times. But it has happened that I'm playing that I'm just saying, okay, I'm just going to draw nine cards and choose three. It's like doing three, three, three. I don't know if it's really legal, but I'll play by the book now. So increase focus, defense potential. I'm going for defense potential for sure. And then we shuffle one more time. Uh, 
All right, and draw three. Spell weakness for sure. Even though shadow is good, spell weakness is 10 times better. Okay, I'm happy I got that back. All right, so also remove token with rest and draw reward two experience. Oh, actually I could have gotten two more experience, um, come to think of it. So of course I'm gonna give them to me now, but technically I was at 16, right? It was at 17. It was three, so nine, I was at 17. So I would have been at 19. Would I have changed my ideas, my, my plans in any, in any way? I don't think so. Because 19 minus 14 is five. No, I'll keep those two, okay? But I am going to get rid of, and that hurts. I'm gonna get rid of uh, eight cards, because two for one health points, right? So I'm gonna get rid of four, uh, eight cards to heal back up to max. So one, three, four, so one, two, three, four, two points, five, six, three points, seven, eight four points so i just bought three cards but at the, in the same turn i lost eight all right so but at least I'm, I'm much more confident now i have more health more defense so all right we'll see i can always buy more cards later if necessary so my options now is first of all i need to add the blights so i'm up to here and then I'll check the back. It's a side quest, defeat a boss, gain six draw cards. So the boss will eventually be here. I just have to decide how quickly I get there. And seeing how high my um, blight is becoming, I might go there so sooner rather than later. So I have three here, um, which means one fight, which might get me some experience. But is that one fight going to be enough to get the experience I need? So this will be one, four, five, six blights. And I can remove two blights when resting. So actually, I'm going to do that now. I had a rest phase, right? I'm going to remove the blight now. So this skill card is gone. So, hop. So if I go here, be like there, then those three, but then I still have to fight. So I'm going to have a fight where I fight three people, three monsters before the end. This is one blight, this is two blights, this is a third blight and then a monster. I think I just have to go straight down because otherwise I'm gonna end up fighting three monsters unless I do one, three, unless I go like this, of course. Okay, I'll go like that. So I'm going here and here is in events. Okay. Okay. Hardened Gates. Defeat this obstacle in turn to receive three experience. If you fail, remove one health for or skill cards to resolve this card. So this is six. It says plus two per level. We're at level one, so nothing happens. Level two would be plus two, level three plus four, and so on. So basically, I need to get six damage on this Hardened Gate. So let's first see what I draw. Improve, which is perfect in this scenario, and Combination, which is even better. So, um, let's see. If I do improve, I would do two damage. And if I then follow it up with a combination, this would be two damage as well. That would be four damage. And then last word, six damage. Okay, so it's done. So two damage. This will increase the tier of the next one card by played by one. So tier two is also two damage. So that's four damage. And then last word, one plus one, which is the last one, six, boom. And I get three experience. There you go. All right, so which one am I gonna keep? I'm gonna keep improve. Improve is, I feel, good early game. Of course, late game if you're at level three is useless, but I mean, not useless, you still get the damage, but the action is useless. All right, so. Um, then we continue down, we increase uh, the blight by one. Okay, this one has nothing on the back. Okay, so it's just a regular token. Okay, so I can go down and then I have two rest phase. If I go right, I have one rest phase. I think I'm just gonna go. Okay, this is three. I'm gonna go left. 
and get an extra event in before there. Okay, well, I like events, even though you never know what you're going to get. But okay, this event is the ground shakes as cold walls. Okay, so it's a cave in. So A4 is destroyed. B5. Oh no. All right, B5 and C1 spaces. C1. So I'm going to have to go around, which means I'm going to have to be really, oh, this is, this is a horrible event. Oh my God. All right. That event. And then we have a rest phase. I have five experience. Do I really want to do anything? Mm, full health and everything. I could get back a bunch of cards, but I think I want to keep it until later. So let's just have a battle. Yeah, these two are gone, of course. Hmm. Okay, I'm not I'm not liking having to go through here after getting three enemies. Because it's three enemies. I'm gonna have to fight three enemies at one point. There are two raised bow bearers, they have the same stats. So once again, if I kill them, they might come back. Okay. But their weakness is melee. And um uh, okay, when they come back they have two health and they have five health now. So Oh, and by the way, I mentioned that if you run away, you get blight. It's not true. If you run away, you get rid of cards. So, but then for everybody. And you can only run away on your turn. So, we have Infuse, which means after using this card, you increase the damage by your level, character level. So, um, but you only increase the cards with no ability. So, let's say I use this, then this one will be 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, so cleanse, we know that you get rid of this, but it's not there. Focus means that you get plus one damage if you use the previous focus, but there is no focus. Combination is not usable either because we don't have enough melee cards. So basically, these three cards, both of them are become two. So two, 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 because it's times two over there. This one is nice because it's two already. This one makes it three, actually. So these two together would be five damage, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use it on the first bow bearer. Infuse plus this is one times two is two. And then this increases this one plus one. So it's three. So that's five damage, which takes him out. And then I have one more card that I can play. And I'm going to play focus. I'm not a fan of focus. Simple reason. They don't come up. I mean, you have to be lucky that they will come up. Of course, you can always keep them and then, you know, thin your deck and they'll come up more often. But yeah. so two damage there. So now we check if the raised bow bearer comes back to life. Remember, check mark, he does come back. The next, he doesn't. Oh my, I'm really, really, really unlucky with the dice rolls today. What's going on? So they both survive. They hit me with four damage. So one, two, three. Four, down to seven and I'm vulnerable not emotional but physical physically anyway so I'm going to keep infuse because I like that though especially if I boost this later on um, okay and second round let's see what comes out remember they're vulnerable against melee so Increase the damage value of this attack by your level. So it becomes two. Two times two is four. So that kills this one. And then I only, I'm only i just going to use a combination. One times one is... Uh, one times two is two. So two, he's dead for sure. Oh no, he's, he has five health. I need one more. Let's use this one on top. So they're dead. Okay. I still have to roll for him. But I'm going to keep um, attack potential. All right, so let's see if the left bow bear comes back to life or not. He does not. Fantastic, cool. So they're both dead. So I get four XP, so nine, and they go away. And then my blight raises by three. One, two, three. Okay. So the side quest is, can gain five experience in an encounter, minus two blight. I'm definitely getting that. Actually, no. No, I'm not getting that. 
Okay, so we've done all that, and now we have to go around, So, because everything is blocked. When I did this scenario, the campaign has never happened, so this is new territory for me, so I go here. Or actually, I don't have to go all the way. If I go here, I can just go down, but no, I'm just going to go here. So I start with a rest phase, which will... Okay, so this is, of course, just resets. And then um, I'm going to get rid of two cards to go back to eight. Because I think I might need it since I'm going to fight three enemies soon. Um, and then I have nine experience, which is kind of sad because I need ten for most other upgrades. Um, but I'm going to fight three people. So um, I'm definitely going to get a lot of XP. But I don't need to buy new cards right now is not going to help me at all so i'm just going to leave it at nine and hope that i maybe get to 22 somehow magically probably not going to get that but this will give me another skill card passing six and 14 i already had one for those it's not going to happen okay all right so let's bring on the triplets so first one erased sword bearer okay another one that might come to life but good thing he only has one he only has uh, one he only does one damage Next one is a Parasitic Muncher. He's also pretty easy for life, one damage, and then two. Oh yeah, it's supposed to do the flavor text. For the Raced Swordbearer, tis but a battered soul reliving its own nightmares. And for the Parasitic Muncher, it is fast and incredibly agile monsters of twisted nature. Okay, there we go. And then one more. Also one damage, good, but of course the, the experience is low. The raised bow bearer, once again, carrying its burdens on its soul, soul for eternity. So it's weak against melee. So two who might raise up again, and then another one. So we have, let's see, we have spell weakness, which is perfect now. This is gonna be awesome. All right, so spell weakness, you know, does it times two for one target okay which is probably going to be the bow bearer and then we have pierce increase damage dealt by this card to a single target by the number of the same type of action cards in your hand so okay so it'd be like plus four okay um i imagine plus four maybe it's plus five so this is a potential question like does this I'll add, ask it later on and uh, I'll uh, put it into the video whether or not I'm doing this correctly. But to be safe, not to cheat, I'm going to make it more difficult and say it's only plus four. You don't count this one because it says in your hand, right? This is how I interpret it. So this is also basically one, two, three, four, five. So five damage in total. So um, I'm going to end up using Pierce just for the bow bearer. Let's get rid of it by... So five, okay. Um, then we have Corrosion. You can draw up to three, three blind cards, blind cards, this one, to increase the damage by, for each card. But I'm not gonna do that, it's not worth it. Um, this one does one damage to everybody. Um, <laughs> so if I use see all right if i use this one on the parasitic muncher two times two is four that means he is dead as well all right so one two three four he's dead done gone so now i can still play one card for the raised sword bearer um i could draw three blind cards and just in outright kill it but i don't need to I have three shields so even if the bow bearer comes back and the sword bearer attacks i'm still i still have one shield so i know my shields will be gone but I, they won't damage me right so i'm going to i'm going to use um something i don't care about so i'm going to use this one which would just do one damage to him okay so then I have to get rid of my cards. I'm going to keep Pierce, of course. It's really a nice card. 
And then I'm going to see if the raised ball bearer comes back or not. Let's see if he comes back to life. Of course he does. People love me, you know, it's just keep coming back all right so he hits me he's dead he hits me so three damage down to zero but they don't touch my health luckily all right so these are the ones that came out a lot of melee the ball bear is vulnerable against melee and this is the melee weakness so first i'm going to use this against him it's one times two is two he only has two health left so technically this should be three actually, um, because he comes back with two health. Anyway, so he's dead, really dead. And then this one, um, we still need to hit him for three. He has no weaknesses, but I can use melee weakness for one. So it becomes times two. So that's three damage in total. And then this one on top means five damage. No, two times two is four. Two times two is four. And then one is five, so it's six damage in total. So a little bit overkill there. So I keep the melee weakness, the other two go away. And then we roll and see if he comes back or not. I hope not, to keep my health. He comes back because what else did you expect? So he still has to health so he hits me for one and then draw three cards why is there one card face up oh it wasn't oh i was a reflection never mind okay so i have a stun card um and then sense depending on how many blind cards there are here but there's nothing and I can remove an action card from my hands to gain four health. But oh, it's only minus one. I think I want to keep this for when I fight the boss. Because I won't see the boss anymore after this. Which is good. So, I mean, I won't see any other enemies in, until I fight the boss. Which is good. Alright, so I just need one melee card. Which will be sense. One times two is two. That's so where he's dead. Okay, and I can immediately store it. So I get to keep it. In that case, yeah, no, I'll just keep it. But I also decide to use cleanse just to get rid of it because it's just it's occupying space and I'm not it's just zero damage unless of course I upgrade my spells. No, I'll keep it, I'll keep it. Alright, so they're all dead. Two, three, five experience. So that's up to 14. And then we add three to the blight. One, two, three. And the side quest could have been defeat a level 3 enemy, but there's no way we're at level 3 yet. We're still at level 1. Okay, so this goes away. Alright, next is um, a rest phase. Let me go here. Okay. So we get to rest, so we get to spend 14 experience. Now I'm going to increase my spell mastery uh, because if I then do this, it means I can use a level three against one of the bosses, which would be nice. I mean, not level three, it will increase that weakness. So the twos will become very valuable. So I'm going to increase this for 14 XP. So all the way like down to zero um, and spend two action cards to heal once. There you go. I really need to spend money to get action cards back soon. I mean, money experience. All right, so that's it. We increase one. And then we go here. We don't do anything with the rest. Increase one. Done. And then we go to the boss. All right. So the level one boss. Let me get rid of this first. So the level one boss is called Colmont and Varmus, okay? Because they're buddies, they're supposed to attach these two, okay? And basically it's like this huge snake. The Varmus, the devourer of flesh, they say one of a kind nature study flesh taker. He has no weaknesses, 16 health, and he's an important target. So 
Players cannot attack, uh, cannot attack other enemies until this one at least has one damage, and he does two damage. Then Colmund, if we kill him, we get a special action card in our hand. He has 12 health, he has no weaknesses, but for him you have to roll the faith die. So if it's a check mark, he hits twice. So two damage. If it's an across, he will deal damage directly, ignoring defense. So basically, he's a tough guy, and he says, "Let me relieve you of that rotten body." Charming. All right. So I my starting defense goes back up to three, and from from now on, my spells are level two, the top one. Okay. I get to draw one, and it is a spell, which is awesome, 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 awesome. I'll tell you why it's awesome. Because I have two whirlwind cards, which means I will damage both of them twice for two damage. But first of all, I'm going to do spell weakness on... Uh, I know it would be a good idea to stun, but not yet. Because I want to use the combo of these cards. Um, although stunning common will be fine, fine as well. First I'm going to do, use this on Varmus, okay? I do one damage on Varmus also increase his vulnerability to magic times two okay then i'm going to play at least one whirlwind which is two damage to colmund and four damage to varmus so varmus has 11 health so i could play another whirlwind which would mean another two damage to colmund and four damage to varmus which would put Varmus to 9, or I could try to do a stun on Colmund because he can really hit me. So I'm going to try to do a stun, even though so far my stuns have been wildly ineffective. First, another damage, and let's see. I need to have a check mark. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. No, I cannot get a stun at all. All right, so these cards go away. I keep the spell weakness these to go away and then they attack so let's do um i guess comment first so he either attacks twice or just attacks me with my health i i prefer to have i'm not gonna say i'm gonna jinx it yes i got what i wanted so he penetrates and does two damage i'm down to six and then farmer does two damage to my shield one two okay still in the game still in the game Oh, there was one face up, that's what I thought. Okay. Okay, we have Recraft. Draw the last removed action card again and play it again. Doesn't count in the max attacks limits. So the last removed action card is Whirlwind, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to use that immediately. This raises my defense and this will give me health. Um, no. Is not finishing combination for every combination triggered this turn. Oh, we don't have any combination. Too bad. If we had a combination and did it, this would allow us to keep an extra card, which is nice. Anyway, recraft. I'm gonna do this. This does two damage to Varmus. Now, a voice in my head is telling me I should have put the times two on Colmund, but yeah, because he does way more damage than Varmus, but you know, it is what it is. So two damage on him, and then I get to play this again. It doesn't count towards the count card count, so it's four damage to Varmus. So he is now almost dead, and two damage to Coleman, so he's at five. There we go. And then we shall play another Whirlwind, which is technically my second card, so I'm going to cover it up like this. Okay. And uh, this card just goes back, okay. So another four damage, so he's at 15, he gets another two, he's at seven. Um, then I'm going to finish him off with defense potential, so I raise my defense by one, based on my level. And one times two is two, so two damage, which means 17. That means Varmus, devourer of flesh, is dead. He won't be devouring anything, but we still have Colman though. And Colman is now going to attack. And we roll the die again. It is a double hit, but at least my defense counts this time, so 
one, two, and one, two. So we draw new cards. We need to hit him for six. No, for five to win. All right, so we have breaking. Sadly, this is no longer applicable. We do have a double hit, which is awesome. I think we're just going to use double hit, which means, oh no, it's just two damage because we only have level one. So it'll be two, it's going to be four, and then whatever we want. Okay, I'm going to use Restore Faith. Uh, these cards, whoa, 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 I'm going too fast. First, I have to get rid of these cards. One I can keep, which will be... Huh, Whirlwind. I like Whirlwind. Okay, so now I'm going to do Restore Faith, which will do one damage to Kalmund. And also, I remove an action card from my hand, which will be Cleanse. To gain four health, so back to eight. So he now has eight. I need to do four damage. So I do breaking, which is two damage to him. So these three becomes a five actually. These two go away. But then I do double hit, which is one two, one two. Bye bye, Coleman. The boss is dead. All right. So I'm gonna keep. Restore faith. It's good to be able to heal. And then I defeat a boss, so I get six cards back to my draw pile. So for that, I'm going to shuffle. Drop some cards. For that, I'm going to shuffle and then just draw six cards from there. So there's a lot of cards. The thing is, the longer you're in the dungeon, the more cards you lose, the bigger the discard pile, the, more, the longer the shuffling takes. So yeah, it is what it is. Just trying to get something right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's just do it more like this. It wasn't enough yet. All right, there we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six cards back because I defeated the boss. And then also, because I defeated Kalmund, I get a special action card to my hand, and it's this one. So basically what it says is, so one, two, three, and because I already specialized uh, my spells, I already have two damage here. So it all, when I use it, I also heal eight, and also after using it, I have to remove it. Now, when I remove it, it goes back to the removed action card. So there is a chance that I might draw it again later on. So there's always that. So this goes to my hand. I love the innate heal, it's crazy. But of course, I don't wanna use it immediately. So it might also be blocking, you know, clogging up my hand a bit. Anyway, so that's done. Um, and um, then we need to add experience, which is eight experience, four and four. So I had zero, so I'm now back at eight. Reset my shields to three, and that is it. So it says here, draw the next order boss card. Once you defeat it, set the blight back to zero, and re-add the tokens to the map. Okay, so we go back to the front, back to the top, and take back all of this. The cave-ins, that really messed up my plans, but luckily it did not have any bad consequences. I right, put everything back in the bag. It is a see-through bag. I'm going to get a regular bag and then a uh, regular baggy, like black or whatever. I have some coming from Board Game Geek. Um, just so, you know, it's easier to draw. Because now I just draw when not looking at the bag. <laughs> so, all right. So, common environments. Bye-bye, guys. Level one is done. All right. So level one is done, but we still keep the level one enemies. Okay. They don't go away. Um, as far as I know. So yeah, it is what it is. We're going to set up now for level two. Okay. So let's set up the next round. So I'm not sure about the enemies here. I'm just going to play it as if they don't disappear because see how many there are left before we leave we reach level two 
There's still a fair bit. I imagine if you remove the level ones, obviously you'll be more. Let's just, you know, just in case, let's remove the level ones and make it more difficult, I guess. So it could be that I instantly die because I'm afraid that if you don't remove them, because there's quite a lot of them, right? That means if you reach level four, you might not be able to ever see the level four enemies. So let's just do it like that. That's how we'll play it. 